Hello friends, our previous clip uh, was on identifying the origin of the culture which defined the sequence of the days in the week and it had an overwhelming response, a lot of people liked it uh, and it is of course very heartening to learn those kind of things. Today continuing in the same vein, let us just check uh, with regards to our current calendars that we use and you know that when you ask for your date of birth or you book an appointment during a day or your or, or whatever, you are dependent upon the modern uh, calendar that we use worldwide mostly and it's called the Gregorian calendar. So let's just look at a few things around it. First, let me just ask you, did you know that in this Gregorian calendar, uh, there was a time when about uh, 11 odd days were just chopped off. Did you know that? Because in 1752, uh, from uh, after 3rd September, you just directly had 14th September. So those days had to be taken away uh, in order to correct it. Did you know this? Uh, if you didn't check on Google, you will still find that actually these dates in, in the year 1752, these days are missing from the calendar because they were removed. That was when England had adopted the Gregorian calendar. Earlier to that, uh, when uh, uh, you know Europe adopted uh, the Gregorian calendar, uh, 10 odd days had to be chopped off and that was in 1582 and then the very basis of their calendar is the Julian calendar the Julian calendar at once upon a time in one year they had to do they had to have an year which had 445 days one year lasting for 445 days and that was in 49 BC so this is how these calendars have been evolving and let's just look at the story of these calendars and see What's behind this and why did this happen? Because understand one thing, that we are so minuscule in size compared to the magnitude of things in the universe. Uh, frankly, to be able to understand and, you know, be able to calibrate your days so that, you know, you're able to exactly point out from which, uh, from which point uh, the earth travels and comes back in exactly how long does it take to come back to the same position is very difficult and very, very uh, challenging task. To do that, you need to have a very keen observation. It can take uh, years and years, uh, maybe a few generations, sometimes centuries uh, of time to observe. And, and along with that, you also need to have sound mathematic principles and correct principles of arithmetic and mathematics to be able to, to, able to calibrate and, and you know, arrive at a time that actually defines your year correctly in terms of time. That is then your calendar. Now... For all these claims of uh, advancement and science uh, in, in Europe, you will find this uh, quite, uh, uh, you know, glaringly missing. Because in the year 49 BC, uh, when uh, Julius Caesar uh, conquered Egypt, now imagine the way it's always presented to us, especially thanks to even Hollywood, is that the civilized people were conquering a barbaric nation. Uh, well, the barbaric nations seem to have better mathematics and science because the Romans who were till then following the Greek calendar, even though they laugh at them, uh, the Greek calendar, these guys were way off. So what happened was Julius Caesar, uh, with a lot of pomp and show, actually um, uh, had, had, a, had a new calendar adopted, which he called the Julian calendar. And in order to commemorate that, uh, he even named a month of July after himself. Till then the months were, you know, the Egyptians had a 30 day each month kind of a calendar and uh, they were mostly on the solar based and uh, where did they learn it from? Probably the Indians because they had a lot of uh, contact with the Indians at the time. Uh, but then they had these, and you, you get to know uh, probably that they were in touch with Indians because those same months when we looked now, you still have the 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th months as... Uh, September, October, November, December, that is Sapta, Akta, Nava, Dasa. And these are uh, Indic numerals. I mean, it's not the Egyptian numerals. It's not European numerals. These uh, names are Sanskritic names and they've come basically from India because way back at that time, these people, these guys did not have any of those numbers and those systems. So, and these are the months. And then considering that in the Northern Hemisphere, spring was the, you know, onset of spring would have been taken as the first month. So you take March probably as the first month. So then obviously the seventh month is September. Sapta, Akta is October, Nava is November, Dasa is December. That is how you have the names, uh, you know, still coming through. But anyway, coming back to our story, uh, Julius Caesar 
um, named July after himself and then he also added a day to make it because after all he was a great guy. He, he had to leave a legacy so it became 31 days. And um, why did they have to have 445 days? Because their calendar was horribly wrong. In order to align it to what is the right one, that year they had to have 445 days in the year just to bring it back to the correct dates. Then of course after him he was succeeded by Augustus and Augustus not to be undone anywhere he wanted to make sure that he left a legacy so he named the month of August after himself and he also needed to have 31 days my goodness I mean he can't be anything less than Julius Caesar so he too had 31 days now that meant two days taken away where do you adjust these two days they of course adjusted in the month of February so February came down from 30 became 20 days if your children ever ask you why is February 28 days or something don't shut them up answer them questions allow the curiosity it's very good we didn't have it but we need to have that curiosity so this this year that they then adopted was fine but then remember even though they adopted this the the evidence for weak mathematics shows up in the way their numerals are you know the roman roman numerals they could meant they could have quarter and half etc but they did not have fractions you know how it doesn't lend itself to fractions now remember a year is exactly 365.24 days. So they made it 365.25 days. That's how they calculated. Because of this small little error, it was okay for about 100 years. But after 100 years, they noticed that they're slipping by a day. And very soon, in a few hundred years, they noticed that they're already quite way off. And how do they notice that? They notice it because, uh, you know, in order to uh, celebrate Easter or Passover or whatever, which is actually a, a spring festival that depends upon the um, spring equinox, you know, when the day and nights are equal. Now, that's visible easily. You can make out when the day and night is exactly is the same, uh, probably by a margin of a day or so, you can always make out. And then within 10 days of that, you have this festival or, what, or whatever number of days. And then each time they found that now the date is slowly slipping away. It's going back. They're going ahead. So after the spring equinox, at this rate, they will sometimes start having... Uh, the spring equinox back, you know, in January or whatever. So it was quite uh, scary for them that they were not able to exactly celebrate the right time because they were off that. Now, what did they do? Uh, the By that time, the Roman civilization was almost at an end. The church had taken over. So Pope Hilarius was appointed to make the calendaric reforms. But of course, uh, nothing to do with his name, of course. But uh, Pope Hilarius failed miserably and he could not correct it because by that time, they were only six days off. He could not correct it. It went on and do you know, it carried on till 1582 when Pope Gregory was appointed to do this. Now by this time, Vasco da Gama was already in touch with the Indians because he had found the sea route to India uh, for Europe. And then uh, there were a lot of Jesuit practitioners and you know, Jesuits etc. who were in touch with, with priests and Brahmins from Kerala etc. with mathematicians. A lot of documents were taken, copied and all those things. Now the point is uh, we do not know, we have, don't have any references to these because the church was very very secretive about this. So Pope Gregory actually came out correcting the calendar without having acknowledged anybody, without showing to us how he arrived at the calculations. But somehow he arrived and came to a right calculation. Because of which some 10 odd days, because by the time they had gone ahead by 10 days, they had to cut that off. So what happened was having cut that off in 1582, the Gregorian calendar was then adopted by Europe. Now look at the ignorance of the people. This great land of science and mathematics and what not of progress, England, uh, which had by then become Protestant, were very suspicious of this whole move. And they thought, no, 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 this is some kind of a Catholic conspiracy. And for another almost 200 years, 150 plus years, they did not adopt this calendar. So only it was in 1752 that they adopted the Gregorian calendar. And at that time, after the 2nd of September, instead of coming to 3rd September, they had to immediately jump to 14th September. So, and this gap or this jump was called the furlough. And the month and wages were paid in full to people. So what happens is since then, you must have, this might ring a bell to you, the word furlough. Because furlough <laughs> means being paid without having lost any leave and without having worked for it. So that is how a, the word furlough comes into parlance and comes into use. So since then, they started using that and then 
unfortunately by that time now we were under them so we had already you know our calendars were disregarded and the gregorian calendar was thrust upon us however the indian civilization was far ahead of even the egyptians at that time so what they did was they had also adopted the moon into the whole calendar calculations because they realized that we are an agrarian civilization and while the sun defined the seasons the moon defined the levels of water in the soil the capillary effect as you can see from the sea tides and all that so they knew that the moon had a very significant impact upon produce and harvest and all those things so what they did was that they also factored in the moon but then the moon has 10 days short in the end of the year if you go by the moon cycles so it every 32 months they make it uh, an adhik masa and then they correct it but then they carry with that this what happens is it empowers the farmers and the general class to be able to understand the dynamics of how nature works it's no more a, a night bulb in the sky and you no more have to wait for monsoon announcements and other announcements from the you know national authorities or anything like that the farmer was empowered he could go by the moon cycles and he knew when to throw the seeds when to do the harvesting and you know all those kind of things so we had that kind of a system and once we got freedom we were supposed to have uh, you know there was a very nice commission set up by meknath sahar as the chairman a very uh, uh, very intelligent man uh, and and an astronomer and meghnath saha and his commission actually studied 30 calendars across the world from across the cultures and civilizations and and came down to the gregorian as well as the saka but then of course the saka calendar has been used in the government but then it has slowly gone out of use the problem is at that time we were in a kind of a mental state where we were now trying to adopt something new and we did not carry the same value for what our civilization was that is why this whole cycles of the moon and that kind of a calendar was not adopted had it been we would have been much more better off our festivals would not have been shifting day by day every year they would have been always on a given day we would have learned the seasons much better our farmers would have been more empowered in terms of understanding growth cycles and all that they wouldn't have to in an urgency burn stubbles and then create pollutions in the capital region and all that because the cycles are kind of disrupted due to the current cycles that we follow which is based upon government dictates and uh, and uh, you know multinational dictates so this is how we have uh, you know disempowered the civilization and our current general people uh, of the day so once again uh, friends you have noticed what an astounding thing that we had and what we do have right now and what is this calendar the whole thing about you know missing the number of days and then correcting it and not knowing the very fact that whether they they know they no need to debate whether you, they were good at astronomy or maths or physics or all these kind of things because it's obvious in the way these things are used and when you look back most of the uh, indian homes today still refer to the panchang as you call it which has the moon factor in it and then they manage it because that's a much more complicated calendar remember as a take away in the end even the current calendar in spite of all its uh, advancement still has an error and once in every 3216 years it shifts by one day compare that to the indic calendar it takes 31250 years for a slip of one day so you see 3216 days one day error in the current calendar 31250 years for one day error in the indic calendar i leave it with that uh, my friends thank you very much we'll keep enjoying this journey as we learn more thanks a lot acknowledgements to all the people that i've learned can be on the slide thank you bye bye